Uh, the news is ongoing in Minneapolis, the Derek Chauvin murder trial. Uh, could it be delayed or moved, though, out of the city? The judge is considering both requests this morning from the defense team. That issue, um, whether jurors can be impartial following the city's bombshell announcement, that $27 million civil settlement with George Floyd's family. Joining us to talk about what happens next is our legal analyst, Candace Kelly. Um, we depend on you for all things in this case, Candace, and beyond. Um, what's the judge going to do here? You know, when it comes to moving the trial, like the judge said, when we talk about moving the trial, you just can't get away from it. And the whole point of going to another location is to get away from the media frenzy. That's just inevitable that there's going to be a media frenzy and that there are going to be people who are possibly seated on the trial who know about it. I, you know, I don't think that there's any way around it. And he did kind of refer to that. But when it comes to a continuance, I think he was kind of more considering that that might be a possibility to take a break, maybe to revisit it maybe in a month, maybe in two months. We don't know what he has in mind. I mean, everything about this is so topsy-turvy. But I think out of the two, whether it's moving the trial or kind of delaying it, we're looking at delaying it to be a much stronger option here. Wow, but when you say a month, I mean, to delay this trial, everything that's in place, clearly Chauvin yeah. needs to get a fair trial here. But wouldn't that cause a logistical nightmare, a domino effect, if you will? Yeah, it would. It would. And, you know, we saw on the first day when we were trying to determine whether or not they were even going to have jury selection because of the third degree murder charge that Peter Cahill wanted to get it going. He, he really didn't want, mm -hmm. didn't want an interruption to this process. So when we look at this, I don't think that he's going to have a continuance. I don't think that anything is going to stop anybody from the outside from having the fervor that they do in and around it. In fact, last week when we looked at the protesters, it really had, they really had gone away. There was nobody that was out there. But just yesterday, we saw protesters starting up again. The closer that we got with the jury being seated, the, the closer that, or the more people started to protest. So we will look at it that way. I don't know if a continuance would just bring out more people. And that's something he's considering mm -hmm. now. And I, I really just don't think he's going to delay it. Yeah, I mean, big snow, you know, in Minneapolis overnight. Um, as things move into the spring, there'll be less weather to contend with, if you know what I mean. Um, nine jurors, though, yeah, are now um, seated in the case. Yeah, um, four people of color, I believe two black men. Um, will they seat the rest of this jury by the end of the week, or you're saying they will pump the brakes? I think they'll seat the jury. I think they will definitely seat the jury, get that out of the way, because they, they might possibly bring back these seven jurors to see whether or not this $27 million settlement affected them. And that's going to take a little time, too. I don't think that they're going to stop this train. I think everybody wants to get the jury seated, even if they sit and wait in case a continuance is called. I think that that's what we're looking at. They're in motion. And it's good to be in motion, get that out of the way, and then figure out some of the bigger things a little bit later. So when Judge Cahill brings back the seven, right, to talk about whether they know of this $27 million settlement, if they discussed it, can it affect them? Um, what's the determining factor as to whether someone can stay or if they then have to go? It's going to be based upon the juror. The main question that they're going to ask them is, can you still be impartial based upon this $27 million verdict if you even heard it? Because remember, they're not supposed to be reading any media, though sometimes these headlines do creep into their lives. But if we are supposed to believe what they are charged with, it's that they're going to be impartial no matter what they see. But that's going to be the key question. If you have seen it, does it affect you anyway? In fact, we had one juror, potential juror, that, that came uh, through yesterday and took the stand and they asked her about this, you know, her, her impartiality. And she said, you know what? I saw the verdict and I'm afraid that I can't be impartial. So that that's really what pointed them to say and help them move along this idea that, hey, did this happen to the other seven jurors? Let's bring them back in. I, I mean, I'm very surprised at all of it because of the fact that we're going to have to depend on them even if they do see headlines this, like, like this, yeah. to be impartial. So we're really kind of questioning whether or not they can do their job at all. 
Yeah, um, and, you know, let's stay with it because the defense attorney, Eric Nelson, jumped up and down, as he should, on behalf of his client. The judge agreeing with him. This is poor timing. The record settlement, the announcement of it. But could the reverse be true? They're so worried about this hurting Chauvin's chances of getting a fair trial. What about the prosecutors? Could it hurt them? It possibly could. There might be some people who say, hey, you know what? They really got their day in court, so to speak, right? They didn't actually go to court, but in terms of a settlement. So that might put them at ease to, to, to decide one way or the other that a victory has already been won. So there really are two different sides to look, to look at it. But I do believe that in terms of the $27 million settlement, that Eric Nelson has a lot more to be worried about. If people understand the court system and, and how it works, and that's what a part of this is, is making sure these jurors even understand a civil verdict versus a criminal verdict so they can make that distinction for themselves. I feel like it's one headline after another. Candace Kelly, um, you're going to stay with us. We're going to check back in with you because we want to talk more about perhaps what Cahill has on his plate this morning and what he may do. So we appreciate you always. And don't forget tonight, nine o'clock, we will be back talking about George Floyd and all things with this trial. George Floyd, death, justice on trial. It's tonight at 9 p.m. We're right back.